Today on Earth Focus, tracking the pace of Alaskan glacier melt. The expedition continues, coming up on Earth Focus. This is the second episode of our two-part series about the Juno Icefield Research Program. Now that the researchers have been trained in glacier safety and crossed into the heart of the ice field, they are shifting their focus to the scientific research projects here on the world's fifth largest ice field. Returning every summer since 1946, the program, also known as JERP, has collected the longest running glacial climate record in North America. To be on the Juno Ice Field is a fantastic experience for me. I'm part of a, a major program that monitors mass balance of an important uh, glacier, and in addition it gives me the opportunity to try and contribute to uh, the scientific development of young scientists. Mass balance indicates the health of a glacier. A positive mass balance means that the glacier is growing. A negative mass balance means that it is shrinking. The older a mass balance record is, the more valuable it becomes. Long-running studies provide a historical average against which this year's data can be compared, showing how the climate has changed and what may happen in the future. The mass balance data that's been collected by the JERP program is an extremely important record because it goes back as far as 1946. And there are probably only about 30 um, glaciers in the world that have been monitored for mass balance for um, 10 or more years. A glacier exists here because snow that falls in the winter does not melt completely in the summer. The relative amounts of snowfall and melt represent this mass balance. Like a positive bank account, a positive mass balance indicates that the glacier is growing. On the flip side, if the glacier has less snowfall and more melt, the glacier becomes smaller. So how have generations of scientists come to grips with the estimation of the health of this 3,900 square kilometer ice sheet? They dig a lot. I'm working with the Juno Icefield Research Program to understand a bit more about the mass balance of this vast source area of glaciers. Glaciers can tell us a lot about how our climate is changing. And right now, the glaciers of Southeast Alaska are disappearing. 95% of them are downwasting glaciers. That means that they're getting smaller and contributing to global sea level rise. By digging many pits like these, scientists like Dr. Jason Amundsen calculate how much melted ice is flowing into the ocean. When the glaciers or ice sheets retreat, they I mean, one thing they do is they contribute to sea level rise, but they also affect atmospheric circulation patterns, which it propagates downstream and affects other things. Um, there will be changes in the amount of freshwater runoff into the ocean, which will affect the, the ocean properties, um, which could affect the, the marine life. The global sea level is going to rise, and it will rise by varying amounts depending on where you are in the, in the world. Um, the contribution from glaciers is likely to be significant. Digging snow pits has been useful for almost 60 years on the Juno ice field, but when these snow pits are paired with new groundbreaking technologies, the science becomes even more successful. Salvatore Candela is using a powerful ground penetrating radar, or GPR as it's known, to get information from the vast areas between snow pits using the pits themselves as a reference for his readings. The digging of pits and using ground penetrating radar really ties well together. Since I'm imaging what's in the ground and they're actually digging in the area I'm imaging, they complement each other in that if I have a question about what I'm seeing on the radar, I can go jump in a five meter deep hole and actually see what is there. And by pairing their visual observations with what's on the radar, it allows us to come to a much stronger conclusion about where the annual layer is or where a specific density change might be that they're looking for in the mass balance process. By dragging his GPR sled named the Bumblebee and using the pits to calibrate it, 
Candela is helping create a much better understanding of this dynamic glacial system. The researchers also map the movement of the ice with GPS and 3D imagery. So we were successful? I'd say we were very successful. Rotating yes. it around. Okay. So I grab it and I just move it around so that. Wow. Yeah. They even get deep under the ice in vast complexes of subglacial caverns to calculate how the glaciers are melting from the bottom up. The huge Llewellyn Glacier in Canada is melting fast, exposing more of its secrets for researchers Brooke Stamper and Mira Duchka to discover using photogrammetry and ice lens measurements. As the 2013 field season on the ice field comes to a close, we make our way northeast and walk off the Llewellyn Glacier through a dangerous crevasse field. We're winding our way through the crevasses of the Llewellyn Glacier. Everyone's making their way very carefully here because the glacier gets a little broken up. But it's a beautiful day and it looks like we might make it all the way to Lake Atlan. We struggle down through this dusty and blowing newly uncovered ground where the vast Llewellyn has melted and finally we make our way down this long valley to Lake Atlan. Here, we're picked up by a boat and start deciphering the data and working it into the scientific literature where researchers around the world can use it to fine tune their climate change predictions. From the Glaciological and Arctic Sciences Institute on Lake Atlan, British Columbia, this is Jeffrey Barbie, reporting for Link TV. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.